Welcome to a bakery where we see mathematicians doing math work as we speak. Look at all this math. Wait a minute. You're telling me that these cookies are math? No way. Doodly doodle, doodly doodle, doodly doodles and digits. Area symmetry fractions too. It's all here for you. My name is Wendy Miller Pugh. I am a co owner of Bake Me Happy, a 100% gluten free bakery. We started in 2013. I believe we moved down here in Marion Village in 2014. So do the math on that. <laughs> in a bakery, we use tons of math from using measuring cups, doing fractions, percentages, scaling up things, or sometimes if we missed an ingredient, a lot of times we have to do a percentage to try to get back to where we're supposed to be. Multiplication with counting our cookies. Like our trays are always usually the same configuration of cookies so um, you know we could do like a four by six that's 24 we have 10 trays that's 240 so we do that quite a bit there there is literally math everywhere a lot of people might think that you just start from total scratch with the recipe what I do is I start with a base recipe so say we wanted to make a new muffin. We have a muffin recipe that is pretty solid that we can change it to what we need. We would change the ingredient by trial and error. That's a big thing. If we want it to be a more dense muffin, we would add more flour to it, maybe more fat like sour cream. If we want it to be lighter for us, gluten-free, we have different flour alternatives. We have different mixes that create different textures. So. A lighter mix might be lighter grains like rice and tapioca flour, like starchy things. Something denser might have more like sorghum flour or brown rice flour. I remember when I first started, we have a spicy peanut butter cookie and that went through a million different iterations to get the right level of spice. So it wasn't like obliterating your taste buds. Quick question with the baker. Why do you love math? Um, I did love doing math when I was growing up. My favorite thing was figuring it out. Like I am a lover of puzzles and different tricky word things or math games. And I just felt like I always liked to do math. There was always a correct answer. It was never open to interpretation. And there were always different ways to get the correct answer. Those are the things I really loved about math growing up. How do you use fractions? I know that a lot of people are scared of fractions. They're hard. The systems with getting the denominators the same, very frustrating. We use them a lot, measuring our ingredients, obviously in the cup, scaling up. A lot of times it'll be like, let's use a quarter cup more or half of a teaspoon more. But yeah, all the cups are in increments of a third, a fourth, a half. Knowing that if I need seven eighths of something, I can take out, you know, what is an eighth a cup? I don't have an eighth a cup measure, but I know an eighth a cup is a half of a fourth of a cup. So just knowing those basic things so you can get the guesstimations. How important is it to be precise? Mm, baking is really a science. Um, cooking is more of a creativity based activity. Baking, you need to have the right amount of materials and right amount of proportions of your different ingredients, especially a leavener, which is like your baking soda or baking powder. You do need the right proportions in your recipe or it won't come out right. What measuring tools do you use? We use a lot of rulers with cutting things to make them precise. We use the cup measures, the teaspoon measures. We use scales, squid measuring cups, which are ones that have the handle, which is exactly, you know, a fourth a cup in a cup is gonna measure a fourth a cup in the liquid, but it's just easier. We have timers. We have a base time that we have for all of our items. How do you figure out the price? 
This is the hardest, and I think this is where a lot of businesses might fail. And this is where I do a lot of math, and I kind of like it, but it's hard to get everything in the right measurements, I think. So my spreadsheet, it will have, I'll have a recipe I'm using in mind, and it will say butter. A case of butter is how much? A case of butter is $100. So you put those two measurements in, and then how much do you use in the recipe? And then it calculates how much money you use in the recipe. And it creates the price for that. So, and we have to keep an account of the labor of someone making it. So the labor means, say I'm the person making it, how much I get paid an hour, or how much my time is worth and then how long it takes me to do it. And then also if we package it, the packaging price, how long it takes you to package it, any labels you might put on it. Say a roll of labels costs $200, there's a thousand labels on the roll, how much is one label? It'll give you a price of how much money you put into it. Most people will do a markup of like 30 to 50%, depends on the product. And then you kind of compare that to your other products, like does this, price of $3 fit with my other products or is it really low or is it really high and sometimes you have to adjust it so it kind of fits within your whole array of your products you have. It's a lot of math especially figuring out like say a 25 pound bag of flour how much that costs and then how much does a fourth of a cup weigh and then how many fourth of a cups are in this 25 pound bag? How much was my bag? And so it's a lot to figure out. And I think a lot of people starting businesses, they fail to do all that hard work because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard, it's time consuming. What is your best piece of advice for math students? I think right now math, as we've seen how I did it when I was younger, and now seeing where my daughter is, there are more than one way to get to an answer. You might ask your mom or dad to help and they're not doing it like your teacher does, but there are many paths in math. If you're doing it correctly, you'll get to the same answer. So I think that's the one thing that's kind of amazing about math. We all think differently and our brains learn differently. That math was everywhere. You think that you're working on these problems at school and you'll never use them again, and really, you will use them. Whether you are a baker, or whether you are something that's math heavy, like an accountant, or whether you are something you think you're never gonna use math again, like, I don't know, a cosmetologist who colors hair, she still has to weigh out the hair dye. <laughs> so it really is everywhere, and calculators are okay to use, believe me. I even have to calculate eight times six sometimes because my brain just isn't working and I'm not very good at multiplying my eights for some reason. Challenge problem, bakery edition. Wendy needs to bake 500 spicy peanut butter cookies for tomorrow. One tray holds 25 cookies. How many trays will Wendy need to make? Go ahead and pause this video to take your time and solve. Did you get it correct? Did you use a different strategy? Want more videos involving real life math and how to videos for elementary math? Go ahead and like and subscribe. We post new videos every month. Bye! Find out more about Bake Me Happy here.